We are continuing to cover movies that bring us a little bit of cheer. And what better path to cheer than with a Christmas musical? Jingle Jangle on Netflix tells the story of a once joyful toy maker who finds new hope when his bright young granddaughter appears on his doorstep. With music from John Legend, who also produces, and with an all-star cast, Jingle Jangle hopes to be an optimistic bright spot in an otherwise abysmal year. I'm Ronald Young Jr., and I'm on the couch. This is Ronald, and I am on the couch after watching Jingle Jangle, Jingle Jangle on Netflix, written and directed by David E. Talbert, starring Forrest Whitaker, Justin Cornwell, Madeline Mills, Felicia Rashad, Keegan-Michael Key, Miles Barrow, Hugh Bonneville, Anika Noni Rose, Diana Bobnikova, Ricky Martin, Lisa Davina Phillip, Kirion L. Dyer, Sharon Rose, and Abraham Pupula. Jingle Jangle is about an inventor named Jernicus Jangle, who is on the peak of greatness. He's just waiting for one big invention. And when he makes that big invention, his trusted apprentice betrays him, steals it for himself, and begins his own career based on Jernicus's intellectual property. As a result, we start the story with a down and out Jernicus Jangle with no family. He's pushed them away or they have died. And he's now trying to cope with the fallout of potentially losing his business and his livelihood because he no longer has uh, the invention or the passion to create anymore. Uh, Q, the spunky granddaughter who comes back into his life, excited to meet him and excited to help him find the spark for himself again. Uh, this movie is not something we haven't seen before. It's the you know, crotchety, cynical adult that has his heart changed, his or her heart changed by the spunky upstart child. That's what this is. And it's not that we haven't seen the story before, but the telling of this story is different from what we've seen. Um, first of all, the cast is largely black. Um, we're talking about black folks in a period piece that looks like <laughs> uh, there's no specific time setting for when it is. But we do know that it is set in the time of Christmas, if that makes any sense to you. And when I say that, I mean, you know how if you watch a, a Christmas carol, it's set in cobblestone streets where the snow just falls and everyone's like a little bit scampy and everyone dresses like a chimney suite. And there's rich people who like have big hats and coats and they look rich and their presents are, you know, garish and ridiculous. Um that's the time that this is set in. It's set in de facto Christmas time, if you will. And there's no indication of this, of whether this is in the universe we live in or a parallel universe, but I assume it's a parallel universe because there's a, so much diversity and racism does not appear to exist, which, <laughs> yeah, which is a plus for anybody in this uh, universe. This movie is a musical. Um, there's a lot of singing, dancing, and choreography. Um, I remember as it opened, one of the first things I thought was, oh, this looks a lot like The Greatest Showman. There's a lot of, you know, singing and turning towards an audience that obviously is not there because this is a movie and almost turning towards the fourth wall, turning towards us and facing us and, you know, doing big set dance, song and dance pieces right towards us, which I had no problem with. I, you know, I thought that was fine. If I'm being honest, I'm not a musical guy. Don't really like musicals. Um, love Hamilton. There's and there's several musicals that I do like, but 
typically something being a musical will always give me pause as to whether or not I'm going to watch it. This one was pretty good. Um, the music is catchy. The, the dancing is pretty easy to watch. There's a lot going on on, sh- on screen. It's very kinetic. There's a lot of magic in this world. And there's a literal, this feels like a literal black girl magic origin story because one of the main characters is Jernicus Jangle's granddaughter, Journey. And uh, Journey is kind of uh, a little bit of the the audience foil, if you will. Like we know more than Journey does, but Journey is uh, relentlessly optimistic. And that optimism lends itself easily to being infectious. So she goes in there, believes the thing, and it's easy to like look at her and be like, all right, you know what? I believe it too. I don't want to let her down. So let's do this. And that, and that's kind of the message the film is going forward is to have optimism. Don't give up. And of course, believe. And without giving you too much, uh, believing is is something that's very important. And, and you know, with most Christmas movies, it's all about, you got to believe. And if you don't believe, believe. This movie doesn't really acknowledge Christmas as anything more than a passage of time or a marker of time. And while it's set in Christmas land and in Christmas time, I realized that when I got to the end, I was like, this wasn't really necessarily, um, except for if you could take away all of the Christmassy stuff about it, I guess this would have been like a, 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 an inferior movie just about, you know, believing in yourself, which isn't to say that that's not a good movie about self-belief, but maybe you would have had to anchor it to something else like sports. So it's, it's a good movie. It's a good Christmas movie. And for the most part, I really enjoy it. I think it was very well done. The director, David E. Talbert, this is his wheelhouse. Um, He's done a lot of optimistic movies over the course of his career. He's done another romantic comedy called Baggage Claim and another movie called Almost Christmas. And he's done, this is his third Christmas film. There's another one. I don't remember what it's called, but another Christmas film that he's done. Uh, And all of them are really optimistic films where you know, it's meant for the good guy to win. The good guy's going on a journey. And this movie, while I wouldn't say it was exactly predictable, you knew that in the end, good was going to win. Um, And watching it, uh, I didn't didn't necessarily have a problem with that this time. Um, There's some pacing issues uh, and it's, it's, it's by no means perfect, but I don't think it needed to be in order to get to its message which was, and actually maybe it wasn't the message as much as the method because for them to let black people have a movie like this and it just be very simple and clean and not have to be an activist and just be just a regular movie, just everybody's black and to allow a black woman to have agency and a, you know, a black, a black child, a black little girl to have agency and make decisions and be a leader and, have people believe in her. It just, it felt good to watch that. And I think that's exactly the type of movie we need right now in terms of a cheer. Keegan-Michael Key is in it. He is, uh, he's an adversary and he does a good job playing this role. They don't give him a lot to do. They give him a little bit to do, but they don't give him a lot to do. Um, And I think it would have been more interesting if they gave him more more complexity, if you will. And I think it started to creep in towards the end of the movie, but by then it was a little too late. So I think they, they could have given him more, um, Forrest Whitaker is great. This is the first movie where I think he's not like straight, like whispering, like Forrest Whitaker normally does. He wasn't exactly doing that. So that felt good to watch. Um, I like Forrest Whitaker and most of the things that he's been in. And I think this was a very good role for him. Um, and of course, uh, the, one of the stars, the the young lady that plays Journey, Madeline Mills, was fantastic, fantastic in this movie. She was good to watch. She she hit her mark. She did exactly what I expected her to do. Um, singing, dancing, emoting, all of that. Very, very, very uh, fun and joyous to watch. I liked it. Uh, it was good to see it. I, I think the music is very good. It's produced by John Legend, one of the producers, and he also wrote some of the songs and you could definitely see that these songs were, they were good songs. They weren't, um, John Legend can write a song. 
<laughs> so these were all these songs were all while none of them are stuck in my head right now and none of them are standing out to me any more particular than the others uh when they were on i was like mm, these are, i'm enjoying these but i think I'll also that might have been a drawback as well because if there had been more of a broadway type writer on this like you know the people that did frozen or the people that did moana if they had been involved you might have gotten something or even Lin Manuel, you might have gotten something more catchy Whereas I was enjoying these songs in a moment, not in my head to the beat and all that, which I always do with John Legend. But the uh, the hooks weren't necessarily sticking to my ribs, um, which John Legend can do with his music. But in this instance, it felt like that wasn't happening for me. But they made very good music. I was bopping my head. There's a snowball fight set to Afro beat, which is fantastic. I was like, oh, I can watch this scene for a while. This is great. So, um, yeah, I liked it. I, I thought it was a good movie. I think that this is a great family movie. This is a great movie for people with kids to watch with their kids. Uh, this is a great movie for people with dogs and cats and partners. And if you just want to watch something where the stakes are just, they're not that high. You're in a magical world of invention and wonder. And it's meant to be light and airy and and just good. If, if you're in the mood for that, Jingle Jangle is on Netflix. You should watch it. I would give it three of five stars. Um, I liked it. I did not love it, but I liked it. And I think a lot of people will love it. So don't, you know, take my star rating is not an endorsement of saying that you should 100 uh, percent watch this movie. Yeah. And that's really all I got. And with that, leaving the theaters a production of Oh, It's Big Ron Studios. Theme music by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. To find out more about this show and other Oh, It's Big Ron Studios shows, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Oh, It's Big Ron. That's at O-H-I-T-S-B-I-G-R-O-N. If you like this show, check out our sister show, Time Well Spent. Leaving the theater will be back soon, but until then, I'll be here on the couch. <laughs> <laughs>